Explorations in the Social Contagion of Memory. This is a study that did four experiments on social contagion of memory, also known as memory conformity. This is where a person's memory conforms to the memories of the people around them. Experiment 1 and the basic format of all the other experiments, the researchers showed a subject six pictures. Before the proper experiment, the researchers determined the kinds of items people expected to see in a scene, in, in a scene name. Uh, the scene names were toolbox, bathroom, kitchen, bedroom, closet, and desk. For example, in a toolbox, you might expect to see a wrench, not a cake. Thus, if the scene is toolbox, wrench would have a higher expectancy than cake, or tape measurer. When the researchers assembled the slides, they excluded two of the, of the most highly mentioned objects and also excluded two of the least mentioned objects in each scene. And so the experiment ran like this. One, the subject looked at each of the six scenes for 15 seconds. Two, they would perform multiplication tasks for four minutes. And third would be the collaborative recall of the six scenes. Now, in this part, both the subject being tested and the confederate recalled objects in each of the six scenes. A confederate is a fake subject who is actually working with the researchers. The confederates weren't actually doing this project, but they were rehearsing from a script. Now, in this phase, in addition to recalling objects, the confederate, confederate would de be deliberately recalling false objects, known as the contagion objects. The subject after the, was then sent to an individual recall test where they were given two minutes to write down every object they remembered from each scene. So that's the basic experiment. But also, half of the subjects were warned about the possibility of social contagion of memory or memory conformity, and the other half were not warned about it. And so you can see those results there in Table 1. The control items were correct items recalled by the Confederate that the subject did not recall, and the contagion items were the fake ones. Uh, remember, in this, in this table, remember means the subject can actually see the object in their mind. No just means that they know, quote unquote, that the object was there somehow, even though they can't see it in their mind. And recall is just these categories added together. In table two, you can see uh, that when they were warned, the subject not, not only copied fewer objects from the Confederate that were incorrect, but they also copied things from the Confederate that were correct. Now, in experiment two, the researchers just varied how long they exposed the subject to the six scenes. In experiment three, the researchers varied the number of times they presented to, the number of times they presented the non-existent high expectancy items. Now, this is important because it shows that even without a confederate mentioning high expectancy items, subjects will recall these high expectancy items. In experiment four, the researchers compared the effects of a virtual confederate where they told the subject the responses of a confederate who wasn't present with the subject. The result here, according to the researcher, is no statistically significant difference, but from this, having the response of others read to you is probably more effective than having the actual person make the responses, even if we can't say it with 95% certainty given the priors going into this experiment. Now this study, uh, across multiple experiments, shows a finding that has been robustly replicated previously, which is that memory conforms to the memory of people around you. Now this study just looked at very basic memory and over a very short period of time. The result of this study and others like it make it seem plausible to me that much more profound for forms of memory conformity, such as memory of UFOs and alien abductions that fits popular archetypes, or aliens performing medical experiments or using homicidal gas chambers could occur over longer periods of exposure to these archetypes and over you know, multiple sleep cycles. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumb up and leave a comment. This has been Ryan Falk of Daily Data, and I'll see you next time.